<laughs> oh, that's a... <laughs> that, that's good. I have, I, like, I have to say, that's that, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes. Dennis, my friend, it's been a um, freaking minute, man. Uh, like, Which you're like the traveling man. Yeah. You've, you've been all over. Where have you been? Just, you know, rapid fire, just the place. Since, since I saw you last, I went to Salt Lake City and then to North Carolina and then to Atlanta and then to North Carolina and then back to Spain. Holy moly macaroni. Indeed. What so, did you think about Salt Lake? Let's start there because I've been there, but only at the airport, right. which is odd uh, that you don't, you know, ever leave the airport. But did right. you, you obviously were there to work there, right? I was, I was. And it was, uh, yeah, so I was uh, staying in a hotel in the middle of downtown Salt Lake City. Um, and to be honest, this was my first time near the Rocky Mountains, really. I've never been to Denver. I've never, like, I've flown over them to get to California, but I've never been anywhere near uh, the, that mountain range. And it was, it was gorgeous to, uh, like, it's not totally unlike where I am here, where we have mountains on the horizon, uh, but these were different mountains, and these were uh, there was snow. There was snow on top of some of them. Uh, where, where down in the city, it was like shorts and short sleeve weather, um, and it was just generally uh, the terrain is gorgeous. Uh, we when I flew into the airport, I flew over like the Salt Lake, uh, the titular Salt Lake. And um, there's a lot of uh, salt, like more salt than lake, uh, in my in my estimate. Uh, and it was uh, it was. I think that's pretty much true. Um, and and you're probably not the first to have noticed that. Just just no. That. I I I assume uh, I assume uh, Brigham Young recognized that uh, thou shalt not drink from the lake. Was he? Uh, hmm? Was he? Was Brigham was he Young? Uh, I mean, at first, yes. Early on, right. In the earlier years, right. Yeah. I mean, what do you know about him? Aren't we all? Eh. Eh. Not enough. You want to talk about, or you want me to change the subject? Talk to me about the the, the restaurants and the bars in Salt Lake City. Right. So, uh, the well, first of all, the the one thing that I knew about Salt Lake City uh, was that the like because it had been more or less designed by someone that was like, we're going to build a city here and this is how I want the city to be built in a way that for sure, nothing in Europe is like that. Um, and or most, most anywhere, right. And most anywhere. Uh, but this was a designed uh, city. And, uh, the one thing that I knew was that the streets are really wide. Uh, and I, th I think the reason for that was just like, you know, now we're just on horses and buggies, but, uh, doggone it in the future, we're going to have, you know, more well, horses and buggies or whatever. There's a more practical reason that they're wider. You saw the special cars that they build there because the, the man driving the car has to have room for six or seven wives and the children. So they're all driving around in buses, right? Is that true? I did not see buses full of families, no. Uh, but also the the blocks are freaking enormous. Like it's it takes, uh, like you, you you look at the map and you're like, oh, that's three blocks away that should be a seven minute walk, but no, it's like a 30 minute walk because the blocks are damn big. It raises a question. So there's no standard for what a block is. It's simply the distance between two side streets, True. between two streets, period. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Exclamation point. Yep. So if there's a, if, if there's a, a, a sidewalk, then there's a road, you cross the road and then there's right away, there's a path where it stops. Yes. <laughs> I, are, I are you are you following along? Yes. No, I'm Those sorry. Are, it's, that's, it's, it's past eleven o'clock. You're a blockhead. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm block. I'm sorry. Yeah. It uh, just it just. I mean, how short could it be? Could it be like a? Yeah. You know, what's a, the a minimum possible minimum possible block? That's an that's an interesting question. It would be the size of a chunk of concrete that would signify the curb between the two streets. Yeah, but that's that's when you get so small, it turns out to be like a roundabout or something. I think you need to have a building. That well, people can walk into. No, no. Yes. I think a committed a space that's committed to something, even an empty lot, is a committed space. Okay, but an empty lot. How small are you going to get with an empty lot? Is it? It's not going to be like ten feet by ten feet. Um, I wonder if it's a lot big enough to build on. That joins joins your concept. 
precisely my point. Uh, so well, not let's, precisely. I, I modified no, it so that no, it was uh, abstractly my point. logical. Yes, it made a lot more sense. So let's have all of our uh, city planning uh, engineers that are listening to write in and let us know, and huh. then we'll report back on the next right. episode. Well, I bet you there are some. I mean, there's some. some. Like I would say. Many. So doesn't. anyway, wide streets and long blocks, and we haven't gotten to uh, uh, when you're yeah. walking those blocks. You, restaurants and drinking establishments. I'm particularly interested in drinking establishments. Are you now? Start. Yeah. There. So the Mormons aren't uh, aren't that into that. Uh, but there drinking. are bars, or they're not bars. There are. Uh, I was I was warned that uh, that not only are they not into alcohol, they're not into caffeine, which uh, is like the two best legal drugs. Uh, but, um, it, it, there are, well, okay. I did not see many bars. There was a bar in the, in the hotel that I was staying in the, uh, Sheraton in Salt Lake city. If anyone wants to look that up. And oh my go word. There. Sheraton. Uh, yes. They're out of business as of this week, I believe. Well, that's probably because I didn't. No, that's uh, Howard Johnson's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, well, whatever. That's Howard Johnson's. I'm sorry. So, uh, so when I, when sure. I checked in, uh, they, maybe you've traveled more than I have, uh, like with the, I guess the last time I checked into a hotel was a couple weeks ago in, uh, in San Francisco. And they asked me a question that I'd never been asked before. Uh, they said, would you like, uh, would you like, would you like, um, housekeeping services oh, yeah. during, during your stay? That's been going on for a couple of years. And, and I was like, uh, I sort of thought that was like a thing that, that well, you get happen. points in, in my, in my, uh, membership at the Marriott. Right. If you don't get cleaning service every day over the course of at least four days, I mean, right. if you're only there three days, you don't have a choice because there's only one cleaning day. But, huh. um, but if you skip it, you get points. And the more points you get, the more free stays you have. Right. So that's so, the incentive. Do I need towels and somebody make my bed every day? No. Every no. other day. Or just bring me a pile of towels. I'm good. I don't mind sleeping. And I have sleep in the sheets in my bed for, I don't know, I would like, like to say seven months. <laughs> <laughs> Until the sheets are tattered and worn, <laughs> you, you've still you've still got glitter from Christmas on your right. on your sheets. Uh, the no. um, so like that at first that threw me because I was like, well, what do you mean? Heard like, right. be, because I, I thought that was like uh, one of the things about going to a hotel is that you leave the room and then you come back to the room and your bed's made and and like that was a typical thing uh, from the before times, and when I first got asked that question in. San Francisco or in Berkeley, uh, I was like, I guess. But this time I was like, I, I thought, uh, no, I'm only here for three days. I can make my bed for three days. I don't need to. Uh, and, and so tell me this, this is an insight into your character. You were in a hotel room in Salt Lake City for three days. And yeah. when you get out of bed in the morning before you leave, you make your bed. Do you make your bed neatly? Do you make perfectly, your bed properly? Perfectly. You tight military corners? I mean, I do what I do at home. Like I sort of like close the burrito back up and, oh, that, and really? that done. With, yeah. the, with the little uh, pillows tucked in no no i i don't care that much but oh. again like then when i then when then when it's bedtime i arrive and i also don't care that much that everything's not like perfectly aligned whatever oh. uh, so so anyway so i get there and they were like uh do do you want this and and uh, do you want uh housekeeping every day and i was like no nah, that's fine and so and they said oh uh thank you for making the sustainable choice in exchange for your decision, uh, it was very, it was very, it felt trend, very transactional. They said, uh, because you made such a sustainable choice for the environment, uh, we're going to give you, uh, I guess over the course of my three night stay, they gave me like six uh, five dollar Starbucks coupons to be used at the lobby Starbucks there. Oh wow, that's great! And and I was like, okay, uh, thanks, but like that's good for for sure for a, for a large a large coffee every morning uh and and then another coffee in the in the mid morning or afternoon or whatever and like i it i don't know i was i was sort of surprised uh but why what were you surprised about exactly it sounds like a first of all you may not know this obviously you don't is that it is typical for the remuneration in exchange for the housekeeping or anything to revolve around tickets for coffee or in different cities, of course, a ticket for drink or even an appetizer at the, at the, at yeah, the see, that was totally new to me. Well, when you're in a Marriott, if you go to a courtyard Marriott, which is my favorite Marriott, that's not the highest uh, stars. It's not five stars they are all four stars, but I love them is they each have a little a restaurant 
and I've served Starbucks and they've got a menu of limited, you know, a couple, three salads, a couple, three sandwiches, a lot of stuff kind of pre-made, but the salads are great. And so when you, when you get, like when I book, I say, so I'm a Marriott member with a certain status on silver or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So because of that, you get a free breakfast at the, at the, at the place in the morning. That's extraordinary, but you're at least going to get a free coffee. Right. And here's the thing. When you go to the desk in a place that's doing what they're doing with you, this is smart. In a place like that, if you go to them and you say, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, this isn't a big deal, but I've got a complaint. And it's always, so, you know, let us know what it is. Say, well, mm-hmm. I went to find a movie channel and, and lo and behold, none of your movie channels were working last night. And it's my habit to watch. And so it was just kind of, I just wanted you to know it. And they say, Oh, is it, I'm sorry, sir. Is there something we can do to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you say, well, yeah, do you have some points? And they'll give you on your credit anywhere from 500 to 2,500 points. Look at you. And if it's a, let's say, I, let's say the complaint is different. Let's say, well, yeah, you know, there is something. Thank for asking about how my state was. When I went to the hot tub, I found that there was hair in it. And it wasn't a little hair. It was a, <laughs> it was a cloggy hunk of hair. And it was wrapped around a fucking Band-Aid. Uh-huh. And, I'm, and it so grossed me out that for three days, I didn't do the thing that I was almost really most looking forward to staying at your hotel, which was to go into the hot tub. And I just, just approached travel tips. This is why people subscribe. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. sir. I wish you would have told me. Well, I would have said something sooner, but as it turns out, I was exhausted. And I must say, because I didn't have a hot tub, I was cranky. And so they said, well, can we help you, sir? I said, well, how about some points? And they'd say, well, we're 500 points. Oh, no, I no, just let me tell you again. (laughs) You know, the number that came to my mind was 2,500 and they'll make a face. Right. And you say, well, I know you can't go there, but, you know, seriously, this 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 is going to affect what I tell people about what it's like to stay here. They will give you 1,500 points. That's good for a free night somewhere. Yeah. This. This whole uh, economy of arbitrary bullshit points, uh, just like if I traveled more and I and with all my travel here, I got a glimpse of oh, what if I traveled more of uh, you know airplane upgrades and hotel upgrades? Like I could see a world in which if if I were to spend half the year traveling away from my family, uh, I could right. certainly rack up these but points. you get, and get some fire miles as it stands, correct? Uh, yeah, but they expire and uh, they, they book me on different airlines. So this, so maybe part of the reason that this was weird to me was that this was my first time going to conferences in the United States. Oh. Like I've been traveling around Europe and uh, right. a little bit of Asia and a little bit of, uh, of Australia. And this hadn't happened to me before, but Apparently, what you're describing was commonplace uh, years ago, well, and, and, and competitively so. So that the the different hotels. I mean, I'm a member of a, a Best Western conglomerate that gives points. I'm a member of uh, Marriott, which is the best. And and you know, hats off, shout out. I mean, it's incredible. And yeah. um, thank you to their sponsorship for this. I, I never, I I don't. I could count the number of times I have not stayed at a Marriott in 20 years on one hand. That's how. That's what my member. That that's how many points I've accrued. I get. You're one loyal week. motherfucker. Well, it's 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 uh, you know it's not altruistic. It's it's rewarded. You know, <laughs> right. a week. I could you know, and it's typical for me to say to my spouse, you know, hey, doll, let's go and my, my points are expiring. Go to I gotta go. I gotta no, go away for they, the weekend. My points don't expire like that. It takes years to expire. But let's go. Let's let's spend the night. Let's go up to Grand Rapids, which we've done, or let's go up to over to South Haven and stay on the beach one night, or let's go here or there. And it's free. The hotel's right. free. And because I'm obviously a frequent flyer, they treat me like royalty. Well, sir, we've upgraded your room, and now and thank you for your request to be on a high floor. You're now in the balcony, and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, and you know, I could say, well, is there a presidential suite available? I say yes. Well, how many points would that be? Oh, for, you know, blah, blah, blah. well, I was for thinking, you, sir. I was thinking more like fifty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never done that. Uh, but but you know, the the negotiation on the points for problems, and the one about the movie channel is real. So I can't. I can't remember the last time I turned on the television in a hotel room. Really? Like, it's been 15 years. Really? 
Yeah. I watch I watch the morning news every morning while I get ready and I watch something of interest before I go to bed. Routine. I, Routine. I use the hotel room for sleeping and showering and that's it. And for like storing my shit. But Oh, know. speaking of which, speaking of which, storing your shit sparks something for me. Yes. We haven't spoken for so long and so much has happened in the in the uh, world of uh entertainment, television uh, entertainment, but uh, George Carlin documentary came out while we've been uh, not Mm -hmm. speaking. And it's only two parts. I think they're 90 minutes a piece. Um, But he has a routine about how people feel about their shit. I mean, I'm familiar with the uh, uh, your stuff. My stuff is your shit. Oh, okay. That's that's a famous one. The stuff I have is is stuff. It's good stuff. Your stuff. It's shit. Yeah. It's shit. Yeah. That's, so get your that's shit classic, out of here yeah. so that I got more room for my stuff. Exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's so, so good. And, and it, 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 part of the documentary is the analytics of other comedians who talk about this. And in the case of this particular bit, it was John Stewart. Right. Who, who, who like did a freeze frame and said, what you just heard there, you've got to really understand how important it was for him <laughs> To be able to make a statement that was so universally true, yes, and that nobody else had ever said it the way that he had said it, and and it is so so true, and uh, it and it gets to the heart of uh, how like we perceive ourselves versus other people, and uh, anyway, there's plenty plenty of psychology around around that uh, since then, and but it's a. Uh, that's a super super classic bit. So, yes. so back back, back oh, to Salt, yeah. Salt Lake City, you went, you you jumped, you, you saw the hotel bar. You didn't go to another bar because there weren't many, or there weren't any. I mean, one of the things I do in every city I go to is I find a, a brewery within walking distance, if possible, or whatever it takes. I know you do. Yes. And, uh, and so, so anyway, so I so so I check in, uh, and when I check in, uh, I say with all this coffee, free coffee coming right, your way. I say I say this is my name, and they're like, ah, oh, you're not on the list here we don't see your name spell your name again and i spell it and they're like ah yeah so it doesn't seem like we have a room for you and and i was just like okay um what the fuck's happening here and this is after you got all the free coffee uh in the process i guess either after or either right after or right before and and i guess before and and i and it occurred to me oh wait they had booked me to arrive the day before that I oh. actually arrived and also to leave the day after that I was actually going to leave. Uh, and, and I said, Oh, I think I'm actually booked for the day before. And then they looked and they're like, Oh, there you are. And it was just cool. like that, that solved everything. Yeah. And, uh, and wow. then they, and then they did the free coffee thing. Uh, and this was also my first experience with a hotel where I could unlock my door with my phone. Oh, like, Oh uh-huh. man. Uh, and in theory with my watch as well, yeah. but, uh, turns out with a phone, it takes like four fucking seconds to open your door as oh, opposed to with, yeah. with the, with the, with the key card, which it's takes like one second, which you lose. So, so the, the, uh, a point in, in hand about the, uh, negotiation of, of moving, having to move, I was booked. Well, and, and, and also they, they said, oh, well, we no longer have the room that we had booked for you. Sure. Let's see which one we can find. And it was, uh, from the so lobby, far. from the uh, so I was on the ground floor, and from the lobby, I think I had to walk like three hundred yards. Five, yeah, five quarters through all these different yeah. fucking uh, right turn, left turn, left turn, yeah, right yeah, turn, yeah, left yeah, turn, yeah. right turn, left turn, yeah. left turn, left turn, left turn to yeah. get to my room. Uh, anyway, so let me tell you, so, wham, back yes. in the back in the day, and it might someday actually, we're gonna get to it to Atlanta, but it was, it was it was it was it uh, was Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I was the. Uh, the Point chairperson cities. of the conference committee for a national organization. And as such, I was a single point of contact for the hotel and I'd actually rented the entire hotel. We had 85% of their capacity for our, for our association. And the 15% was for the street. And you so know, you were like, street, I street the so I show up. So I show up mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, I have that same circumstance. They say, uh, we, um, here's the situation. We're overbooked. And you've been, uh, we have a great accommodation for you, just a block away this. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. I said, you're <laughs> no, you bumping don't. me? You're bumping me? And and so she noticed right away that I'm using the inside term of what they're doing. Ooh. They never call it that. They call it, you know, now I know. pleasant relocation or some such shit. Don't bump me. They wouldn't acknowledge it. Uh, huh. So you've frozen on the screen. Can you hear me?
now we're back. So they were bumping you. I love that you know this terminology of, uh, of like, I always love when I can use some inside terminology and be like, um, well, it puts you in a it puts you in a bit more toward the driver's seat. But exactly. so the work I did with hotel negotiations spanned six seven years national all over uh, every major city in the country: San Antonio, Boston, uh, San Francisco, which was my favorite, New York City. You know, just uh, yeah. good lord, uh, New Orleans. But at any rate. Don't you be bumping me, you said. At any rate, I say, oh, and they, they're they going to bump me to something like the Howard Johnson's, right? And I'm in like the Hyatt, you know, which is high end. And I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I said, look, you're not going to bump me here to go a block away. to the, I, I, This is a five-star hotel. I, by the way, have booked 85% of your rooms. Uh-huh. And I'm totally down with the fact that you literally – don't have a room for me. There's an, I believe you, there's nothing you can do about it. Let me talk about what you can do. I want a five-star hotel, which I got, which was what, a suite. Uh, wait, wait, in that hotel or another place? No, no, a completely different hotel. I was going to say, was, because if, if you booked 85%, like there's another 15%. But the, the 15% street, which is called the rack, the rack rate, they have to have room for people off the street or you lose your, you lose your rep, your reputation because you're, you've got to have, be able to take people. Out. So it's 15%. All these big words, man. Their like street, it. their street traffic was so yeah, high, man. was so high, they got people were high, they were high, they were rented out. They literally had no rooms. So <laughs> I ended up in a five-star hotel and had a chauffeur drive me from this hotel to that hotel. Hell yeah. And this was the big negotiation point. In the hotel of my choice, which were bumping me, I got an open bar tab. Fucking amen. Guess how much money was on that tab by the time we settled up. For one night, I had an open bar tab. Guess how much? How much, was, how much could Dennis drink? Open no, bar. Wrong, wrong question. I'm chairman of a conference committee. Oh, We're, so you have like a hundred people? Or 100 no, we have. A, we, let me. Well, that's it, we had like ten people. Okay, ten people. Who all met at the bar? Right. Uh, I bet you could get up to three thousand. Very good. Twenty five hundred dollars. Hey. And yeah. when I went to cash out, I mean check out. <laughs> they said that the I mean, bar tab, out. the bar tab, was really meant just for me, you know. And I said, "Oh, I, yeah, I understand that. Nobody else bought a drink all night long." <laughs> nice. <laughs> and we settled up. So anyway, so there you are, and and now, and so now, here we are back checking into Mormonville. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, the the locals, you know, invited me out to several places, and I had a good uh, Italian sub, and then I had some good uh, uh, Vietnamese food. And then I had some other good stuff, but at the hotel bar, they like, there was a bar at the hotel and um, it's so, it's so hard to order beer in America these days because every fucking bar has a different uh, 16 different beers that you never heard of and can barely like, you have to go by the class. Like, is this a is this a stout? Is this a porter? Is uh-huh, this a, sure. a amber? Like, well, it should be. They should have menus that separate the beers according to the yeah. They, they should, but uh, most do. And my, if it's a brewery, they do. I don't know about a hotel bar, obviously. Yeah. But. Uh, so anyway, uh, they they had a bar, but um, at the conference itself, the conference was in the same hotel where the uh, where we were staying, which was. In, in contrast to what I described last episode, where we we had to like take a shuttle to a remote location, uh, we were sort of local, and yeah. I could go, I could run back to my room to get my laptop or, yeah. or to drop off my laptop or whatever. Um, so that was convenient, and uh, and then the the conference the conference after party was uh, people sitting around with uh, diet Pepsi's and board games was like where. In the in in the hotel in the in the in the large space where we had had the the conference. So did you sneak away to the bar and bring back a double or what? So I uh, apparently I was one of the only ones that did not get caught uh, take uh, going to the bar and getting a can of you know uh, double IPA or whatever and bringing it back. Uh, but other people did get caught and were and were and were told you should not take this out of the bar. Uh, oh, so by the hotel, not by the not by. Yeah, the- yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, we ended up at the, uh, you know, the, I, I did play a board game slash card game slash, uh, I guess board game you'd call it. Uh, that was kind of interesting sort of, uh, but yeah, we ended up back at the bar and, um, 
had a couple drinks and anyway it was okay uh but it was it was nothing compared to when we went to atlanta and so when you all were sitting there and 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 you brought in your can of beer and you popped it as i just popped my Hmm. bottle of fat tire and you gave everyone a toast and you said it's time to party (laughs) yeah no i was just i was just sipping it as if it were another boring drink like the other people and, were, and was it in a uh, obviously was it in a brown paper bag which is probably the way you usually drink was it in a koozie or something that no 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 no. but it was it was in a can that was not unlike the other cans of stuff uh-huh. i don't know uh-huh. no one noticed uh no one cared but, or no one noticed or be yes who, who would know? if no one noticed then you want to know whether they cared i suppose right indeed indeed so uh anyway it was okay like uh there was there were no yeah. hangovers to be had yeah, I'm ready to go to Atlanta if I'm in. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm ready so to go. Atlanta's got a, a nightclub scene, man. A bar scene. Yeah. Oh my god. And and the so so then uh, like I I gave my I gave my talk, which uh, frankly was like to my surprise, so well received in Salt Lake City. Yeah, like yeah, people were people were applauding and stuff like in the middle of my talk in in moments that I didn't expect people to be like yeah when that's you, amazing yeah when you were giving insights or technical information it sounds like a thing they would do because of an insight not a technical technical, technical insights well sure but. yeah so insights yeah so like i i i presented you know and we can do this uh, sort of like um uh let me come up with a metaphor that i haven't thought about yet uh it was like we can uh we look this uh this table can stand on only two legs or something and i was like abracadabra like look look this thing you know works uh and people were like whoa i've never seen a table stand on two legs you know is that sort of uh so it was because of technical achievement rather than insight (sighs) the difference (laughs) eludes me at the moment Uh, it does why (laughs) it's like yes i achieved i achieved insight by the way because you seem a little bit (laughs) A little bit on the slow side of things. You lethargic. What are you drinking? Oh, we have we have much to discuss about what I'm drinking uh, because of uh, household happenings. Uh, but the uh, I'm drinking some rum and coke, basically. Uh, but the um, and drinking is like a while ago. Uh, but the yeah, so it got a lot of like applause, and people were like, "Oh, that's so cool!" Like in a way that like I. Tr- when I put together my talks, I try and do things that I think are cool, but like, uh, I get, as is always true, like you get so into the thing that you're doing that it seems sort of normal. And then when you present it to other people and it's surprising to them and, but it's no longer to you and, and it's kind of surprising that it's surprising to them. Anyway, uh, there were several moments where people were applauding and I was like, okay, uh, That's yeah, cool. yeah. So which, like, which, which is like the happen. dream. And I've had people since then come to me and, and say, you know, your talk was the most like, wow, talk that I've, that I've seen either ever or at this conference wow. or whatever. So well, let's, uh, let's put a bookmark on that because I've, I want to tie that into another discussion, probably for another episode upcoming, yeah. this being episode number 153. And that is that what you just described yes. reminds me of a couple of the Gettysburg address from a man who fell, the man who fell to earth, which is probably the best series I've seen in years. We and mentioned this know, a couple episodes ago, and we discussed how, yes, we vaguely remembered this was a thing from before, and then it took us a while to discover that it was David Bowie that played the the man. Before Ke- Keanu Reeves? Yes, I mean, yes. obviously. Uh, so, uh, so, yes, I have so much uh, homework, as you call it, oh, to catch yes. up on. But, um, so... So then I flew from Salt Lake City to North Carolina, and I stayed for a couple of days with my folks, and uh, and then I stole their car and went to Atlanta. Oh, you drove, huh? I Indeed. Went, what kind of six hours? Google said it was four and a half, but it took me about four. So I don't oh. know if, how many tickets bad, my parents have bad, uh, wrapped up on their on their car, but it and the Atlanta conference was really unique because it was. So first of all, last year they had this. Con- last year was the first year that they had this, and they had three hundred people. And the day after the conference, they started selling tickets for the following year, and they sold out in a day. And this is a conference entirely, entirely run and organized by African Americans. Like it's a total. Everyone that 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 runs it and organizes it is is black, and. 
And in in the course of seven and a half months since the previous conference, they went from three hundred to fifteen hundred. Oh my god! They in a year? I mean, in in seven months, they like like they sold like they they sold out of what they had done the previous year. But then they were like, we have this, we have like twelve hundred people that want to get in, so I guess we're going to sell them tickets too and like make everything bigger. And they did that and. There were growing pains, like there were, there were issues where it took like an hour of waiting in line to get your lunch at the, you know, at the conference. No, yeah, an which, hour. Yeah, and you in were the a sun. In the, I was a speaker. Later, I learned that as a speaker, I could have like used my speaker privileges to to skip that line. But still, I, I'm also kind of glad that I like suffered through that to understand, you know, what what the common Suffering attendee meant. felt. But so, unlike. In total opposite to Salt Lake City, in this place, there were open bars just all over the place, especially for the speakers. <laughs> yeah. So in, in what, on the what first- hotel, What hotel, so I get a picture. The hotel was uh, what used to be called Hotel Midtown. I think it's still, it's still hotelmidtown.com. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and, but they like rebranded like the weekend yes. before to something else. I know the hotel, I know the area, Midtown. Yeah. It, that's the place to be. Indeed, that indeed. That is the place to be. Okay, there you go. So. The the night before the conference really began, they opened with booking this entire rooftop, sort of like a almost like a fairground. Like there are there are fairground games and there are rides and stuff. And the, this whole the top of uh, Ponce Center or something, but they had a special section for for the speakers and the sponsors. And so I was in there, and they had this you know wide open bar and and a buffet and stuff and. So many old fashions were consumed, so, and uh, and so music pumping. There was there there was live music. Uh, oh, live music. There was live. There was live music. There was a live. Uh, Goodbye, Salt Lake City. Indeed, indeed, it was <laughs> it was super super cool, and just you know amazing. And so from there, some people at midnight went off to some like trap museum or something some sort of rap music uh, museum or something that but it, at that point i was like oh i'm i've had 12 12 old fashions i think i'm i think i'm ready what's to... that an old fashion is it full of sugar no 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 uh so old fashioned is i i discovered after trying all the things uh, uh old fashioned is uh just a bourbon and a little bit of a little bit of a uh, spicy shit uh but as opposed to what do you mean spicy shit uh, some, uh, I don't know. There's some citrus added to it oh. and some other, and, and bitters, I, don't know, maybe? I don't know if it's bitters maybe, uh, but it's, it's not, it's not super sweet. Like, uh, it, the, could, be a, it could be like a fresco or like a ginger ale, just a splash. No. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't say. Well, it's but, drinks, it's the drinks my parents used to drink. So it's like ancient right. drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I it's like it's literally exactly. cold old fashioned. Yeah. Is it? Is it got a cherry in it? Uh, sometimes, yes. Sometimes it's uh, it's and the just cherry a, gives it a red hue. And sometimes so it's, it is, sometimes it it's just a, a, an orange peel or something. I think it is. I think it is a, a, a couple of uh, splashes of, of, of ginger ale. Yeah, of Schweppes. For sure. For sure. It, it's it could got be. a fizzy feeling to it. A little fizzy. No, there's no no. no, fizzy. no. Well, then it's not ginger ale, bro. I didn't, I didn't fizzy any fizzy. No. Huh? No, I mean, you can't, you can't say, oh, yeah, maybe ginger ale, but it doesn't have any fizz. No, no, I no. Mean, you're, just, no fizzy. you're just rolling over for me a- here. Ain't I mean, no fizzy. Don't let, me, no fizzy. don't let me portion this thing that it was ginger ale. No, no, no. Ain't, fizz. ain't no fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so anyway, that was freaking amazing. And then, uh, and then other nights. So you didn't go were, out because, or did you? I mean, out after. So, so when I got there, I went to the uh, speaker and sponsor brunch. And that was on the 35th floor of some uh-huh. of some building uh, with just these amazing ham. fucking views of the whole city obviously Did you get to carve your own ham no no but uh, there 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 was it was because it was a brunch uh there the there were mimosas was the oh. uh, was the only alcohol uh, champagne and orange juice well, well there was i had the choice of orange juice or uh, cranberry or uh Cranberry some mimosa, wow, or, or some other cran something or other uh, mixture. Cran something, yeah. Uh, so that was uh, that was interesting, and but like beautiful views, but and also like mingling with people. That um, that's where I learned that these days we no longer give each other business cards. We say, "Hey, 
open the LinkedIn app on your phone and let me scan your QR code. Phone and, to phone. And it's like phone to phone, man. And and it was like, yeah, man, I like I see you now online. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there was a little bit of that. And and since then, I've had a couple of those people that I met at that event uh, like reach out to me and, and yeah. like want to talk. Uh, so that was fun. And then we, uh, yeah, and then the first, so I was the second I was the, in the afternoon of the second day of the conference. So the first day of the conference, I was just uh, walking around, schmoozing with uh, with all the people, telling everyone about my my, my company, and generally just befriending people. It was it was good. It was like as I hinted before, I was by far the racial minority, which oh, was right, right. interesting to me, and it was really fascinating to sort of be immersed in that African-American Southern culture uh -huh. that I really, like I grew up in North Carolina, but like not really around the local black people. Like it wasn't a, like, I didn't really have any friends that were in that community. And so to be immersed in this community was, uh, was very interesting to me. Did you feel uh, well accepted? For sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, it, um, it's, it, it was very nice. Um, and just to like, hear all the uh, all the all the slang and all the back and forth and stuff that like is yeah outside of my world uh, was was really cool um and so yes and then the and then that evening there were more open bars blah 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 so many fucking open bars um and it was generally a good uh, a good experience and then i gave my talk which was a brand new like pitch for my company talk that i had not given before in fact, I had written it the weekend before, like between Salt Lake City and, and Atlanta. Uh -huh. I I sat down and I was like, okay, I'm going to write this this uh, this talk, and I don't know, it went pretty well. Like I woke up Great. the morning, I woke up the morning before my talk. Normally, like I before my talks, I, I wake up and early and I and I run through them a couple times, but I ran through it one time and I was like, damn, this shit's tight. I'm I'm good, and, and then it it, and it turned out pretty well. Like the compliments I received were mostly from like friends. So uh, like, you can't really know. Do, but, don't uh, they do uh, don't they do a, a qualitative assessment and give it to you? They might. So the conference sort of suffered from this scaling issue. Like they had requested. Okay. So here's an example. Like they, they requested before, before I went, they said, Hey, give us the, the song, you know, artist and title of the song that you want to like play as you're walking on stage. Oh, cool. That's a great question. It's a great good, question. And good for them. It's a great question. And damn it, if I didn't spend like two hours sure. researching. What did you pick? Right. So uh, so in the end, I went with a thing from the the most badass song from the Kill Bill soundtrack. But in the end, like it wasn't played. No one had music played before they, as they were going on stage. Even you? Like that, it, just didn't, it just didn't come through. Did, it, did, did they do it for you? No, no, no. For nobody. For nobody. Even yeah, though like, they asked for it. It was an aspirational thing that then didn't really follow through. Oh, that'd be uh, the first thing I'd say at the mic. I'd go to the mic and I'd say, so what the fuck happened to my music? Yeah, but and I had already seen all the people not have that, that happened with him. Uh, so, but also, so I was on the, let's see how much time we have. Uh, I was on, uh, I was on the third of three stages, basically, uh, as, as the organizers ex like thought they should be ranked. I was on the, on the worst of the three stages, but uh, uh, according to what size of the room size of the room so the, the the what they thought was the most important stage was sort of outside but it was outside in a way that um that no one could be close to the stage because it was so freaking hot uh, like you couldn't be in the sun so everyone was like hiding in the shade and then also because it was outside apparently they had some restriction about having like loudspeakers so because they were like nearby offices or something so if you wanted to watch one of the outside talks, you had to go and get like special headphones. That oh were, like, my God. Would, yeah, horrible, bad, 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 bad. Yes. Uh, so, and then like you would return the headphones and they would like like wipe them off and stuff. The and the parties it, were good. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. That, that particular stage, I'm so glad I was not on that stage. And in fact, one of my friends was on that stage and he had his laptop overheat because it was in the fucking sun. And like he had to cut his talk short and it was just a disaster. Like. Uh, it, it was poorly, poorly organized in that, in with respect to that. But I was so the second stage was a nicer room, fully air conditioned, and a huge screen behind behind you. But I was not on that. On, I was not on that stage. I was on the third stage, which um, which was a, which was a longer room, and the the screen was still behind me, 
Uh, but uh, for some reason, there was like a table as if people were going to do like a, like a, a panel. like a panel thing. And there was a table in on the front of the stage so that if you were sitting in the audience, you couldn't really see the bottom three, uh, the bottom uh, third of the, of the, Oh my uh, God. Of the screen. So it's unacceptable. Exactly. So, so like I had been there on the first day and I had watched a talk in that, on that stage and I had sat in the audience and I couldn't see the bottom part of the, part of, yeah, of, of and the you screen. Told them, Take the fucking tables down. And so right before my, so I was told to come, you know, half an hour before my talk and half an hour before my talk was just before the previous talk. And I went and I talked, I spoke to the, to the, um, to the AV people. And I was like, Hey, did you know that like the audience can't see the bottom part of the screen? And also like your, your cameras that are recording the, the talk also probably can't see the bottom part of the screen. And they were like, uh, I hadn't thought of that. Like, I just sort of assumed that, that if that table was there, even though no one is planning on using it, like it was important. So I didn't say anything. And I said, you know, move the fucking table. And so he got up and called a couple of the organizers around and they were like, Hey, let's move this table. And they took the fucking table down like for the talk before mine. And then for my talk and like, you can see the whole screen. Good and, Lord, man. And it was this just, sounds... and, and, and I said, really, no one gave you any yeah. feedback on this because it when I was sitting like in the audience, growth. when I was it sitting in the like audience yeah. Yeah. And, and watching it, that was all anyone around me could talk about was like, we can't see the bottom of the fucking screen. Yeah, but, it sounds like they, 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 their growth, their sudden growth. Well, was, also it was in the same there. venue. It was in the same venue as last year. And people told me that last year with 300 people, it felt really, really crowded. And this year with five times that much, uh, you know, yeah. So but good anyway, parties, though. good parties. Yeah, it, it, for sure. Like uh, there are, there were great, great, great parts of it, but other parts that. Um, well, given, given the tables were down, then that wasn't an issue. Your, your, yes. uh, your efforts rewarded. Indeed. And so how did it go over compared to the ovations in Salt Lake City. So not as exciting because I wasn't, I wasn't like sharing, oh my God, this is a stuff that you haven't even thought of before. Uh, rather than technical stuff, I was, uh, I was going over the psychology of programming and what, uh -huh. and what psychology can teach us about concentration and about working uh, more efficiently and stuff. And I listed out a bunch of stuff that was, uh, you know, these are all things that you know, research tells us can make us better workers. And then at the end, I was like, well, you know, what if there was an app that like helped us do all of the, helped us do this and 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 this, and this all the stuff that I had mentioned before. Uh, and I was like, oh, it turns out there is, it's the app that my company makes. So there's a bit of a sales pitch at the end, yeah, uh, yeah. but, but I feel like I still fit in the mold of so many uh, similar talks of, I'm going to give you a bunch of information and you can, this is good information, whether or not you use my product, but also my product solves all of the shit, yeah. which is what most of the talks that I, that I see are well, is, and that's what drives is that. Them. And they paid for, what did they pay for your, your room, your board, right? Did they the pay for your trip. Uh, so because, uh, so I let the Salt Lake city people pay for my flights from Spain to Salt Lake city and my flight from Salt Lake city to Charlotte. And then I only asked the Atlanta people to pay for my flight from Atlanta to Spain. Uh, no, oh. from Charlotte to Spain. So, however, I also, uh, so uh, the valet for, for saving my parents' car there was supposed to be like $40 a night or something like that. Uh -huh. And that was supposed to be charged to my room. And I don't know that I've seen that charge come through yet, but I don't know. That's that's not that's not cheap. But, no, well, it's not cheap, but compared to like yeah, yeah. I called I called the hotel beforehand and I was like, so I'm gonna come down with a car and what should I do with it? And they were like, well, we can do this private valet thing where we like keep keep it super safe, and then like you can take it and use it whenever you want. Right. Uh, and, and I said, well, I'm just gonna park it the whole park time. It, right. And and they said, well, it's either that or you can go to the to the shopping center across the way, and yeah. that's like by the hour, or you can pay on the street by the hour. And I was like. Okay, I'm you easy. got me. Right. You got me. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you go out in Midtown? Uh, we did go out a little bit. Uh, we had some amazing uh, wings the first day. Where'd you go? Uh, did you go to ECO? The name is escaping me. No, uh, we went to a place. God, there's some good places in Midtown. Oh my God. Yeah. So we went to a, a, a place where all the people that had been last year were like, we have to go to this place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we, we went and that there. That was the wings. Yeah. And, but then like there were other, um, 
there were other like because I was a speaker, I was invited to all of these like VIP things where I could go and just like nibble on you know oysters and shit. Uh, in, in the hotel, uh, near the hotel. Uh huh. So well, that's anyway, cool. that's cool. So was, was cool. my story of Midtown was was booked because I was going to be working for three weeks in Atlanta. I arranged at a residence inn type place, but it wasn't a residence and it was a hotel that happened to have a couple of apartments. And so uh, my lovely uh, love of my life was able to join me for a good part of that. So and, I was just able to quickly uh, look up the place I went was called uh, Crickets. Crickets. Yeah. Anyway. The, the food place. Yeah. The wings place. Oh, okay. Crickets. The original JR Crickets. Um, oh, anyway. But anyway, so we booked this hotel. And I, I might have told you this story, but um, I'm out on the balcony or getting my coffee or something. And I see a bar next door, which I knew was there because I had seen it right right across the street. And they were setting something up in the parking lot. And I said, well, there's something going on. And come to find out, it was the annual Oyster Festival mm. in Midtown at this bar, which was known for its oysters. I think it was called the Oyster Bar, actually. And as it turns out, we were there for that. And of course, my one of my favorite things in the world is char grilled oysters, you name Oof. it. And they had literally ten grills set up, mm, baby. Ten grills, all manned, thousands and thousands of grilled oysters. It was it was comfortably uh, developed so that you had a place to sit and, and it wasn't you know terribly char grilled right? oysters. But like, uh, the bloody Mary oysters. Were, but- Oh God, the Bloody Marys were to die for and live music, three different bands, blues bands. And Nikki and I ended up meeting somebody we knew who the hell was it? Maybe the child of some, one of our contemporaries, but it turned into this extraordinary day, right. you know, which we, we, you know, we couldn't have planned it better. We said, well, you know, we're going to come to Atlanta. When's a good time to go? Where would we stay? And mm-hmm. you all imagine all the logistics of hearing about the Oyster Festival and booking next door. None of that. Just, just dumb, luck. dumb luck. It's my midtown story. Speaking of uh, char grilled mm, tails, uh, I on my trip to Utah, I discovered the term smash burger. Do you know oh, that word? Yes, yes, I'm very, very familiar with it. And I had never heard of this technology, but so we were we were at the conference, and I guess on the. It was the final day, and before they were going to have the little after party, some people in my circles were like, "Hey, you know, some so and so is inviting us over to to Smash Burgers," and I heard that, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds like a restaurant chain, you know? Let's go to let's go to Smash Burgers." Uh Uh, But no, we someone had rented a van uh, to take us like forty minutes out of the city to some suburban Utah house, enormous enormous house. where a home? a home, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where a the CEO of one of the co-founders of an important company that I've heard of and and know and am going to do business with that does like educational videos. Uh, but uh, so we we got to this place and they had this huge huge home and and so we were encouraged to you know go inside and they on the on their on their back deck they had rented like professional grill. And they had people there making, you know, friends. They're making um, smash burgers, which, as far as I can tell, is like you make a little ball of of the of of the ground beef, and you then like smash it down really really hard, flat on the grill, and then you flip it over. And uh, anyway, uh, they were some of the best burgers I've ever had in my life. I thought a smash burger also entailed mixing uh, a variety of ingredients into the meat. I don't know what they mixed into, into the meat. It's the to me, of, you know, uh, peppers. No, onions. I, I think the smashing is the important part. The the actual applying pressure on the on the heat to to like uh, to make it flat. Cook it in extra a extra flat. Way. Uh-huh. Um, but then, like they had they had uh, pickles that they had imported from Texas because when the, uh-huh. the guy the guy there like found these were the best. Uh, pickles from texas or whatever and then they were they had a proper uh fryer for the uh-huh. for the french fries and uh it was just an amazing an amazing so meal mark Wahlberg and his brothers own a place called Wahlburgers, As and it's would. a franchise and yeah. i believe you'd have to check me on this i believe that they're they have a feature smash burgers the wall i think the wall burger may be a smash burger i would not and be the, surprised in the and i was in uh grand rapids michigan and saw one of these 
and it was uh, a good, great menu and very cleverly done and just kind of making fun of the, of the Wahlbergs, the brothers and, you know, just like neighborhood shit, you know, and it was, uh, it was clever. Yeah. looks like, uh, Wahlburger. Did it say smash burger in the Wahlburger. Wall gear. Let's see. Look, check out their facts. Uh, peanut allergy. How do we get a Wahlburgers in my area? Locations. There's the wall club. Uh, W A H L. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm on, on, I'm on wallburgers.com. Uh, wall gear. It doesn't say anything about uh, smashing, but uh, but but it's but I I totally believe you. Like I think it's a um, it's not a technology that I had heard of, and I I'm known around these parts at least, you know, uh, as a as a hamburger uh, chef. <laughs> around these parts, where in your in Spain, in in with Spain. with my house? W- with my local family. Yes, <laughs> they're like oh, local, Eric's burgers are the best. Your local family, as opposed to your international family, well, right? Well, so anyway, but but so I want to I want to uh, investigate this. I want to try try it uh, on my own first, but uh, it it was interesting. So uh, also like it. also they were like they were like uh, uh, painting melted butter on the on the on the buns and stuff like oh, like yeah. okay that's that's cheating. Oh like, yeah, we can all we can all serve uh, cookies full of uh, sugar and oh, butter yeah. and and people will be like oh this is amazing this is so yummy. But anyway, well so I want to. Uh, I, I just finished um, the series, which may be on your list. Uh, we own the city about police work in Baltimore, Maryland. That is, it. is very much worth watching. Very much worth watching. It is a slice. It is a slice of American history that helps us understand our current status in uh, police work in America. So that's mm. finished up. I'm, I'm one or two episodes away from First Ladies which are three of the most unique uh, performances. And I'd like to talk to you about the script at some point, the screenplay, I should say, more than the script at some point. Uh, and I'd like, to, I'd like to get into that to agree. But here is the, here, and, and I'm, in, I'm now caught up to Barry, which I think should be an ongoing discussion that we have. It, you, you've started from the beginning? It's a half hour show. It's not, you started from the beginning? I'm done. I'm caught up to like last, I just saw Sunday's episode last night. Okay, because I have not seen the new re, restart. It's, it's three or four into it. But this yeah. is the thing that's unique about Barry that I want to mention, and I love this about it. It's a 30-minute show. I love those. Everything else we see, everything else I see is an hour. Yeah. And, um, and, and so there's that. So that's on the list. But, but here, but let me, let me say this, and you gotta, we got to figure this out. you got to get caught up in, in four, it's four or five episodes of The Man Who Fell to Earth. Mm. Because... I think that you, I, I think that you will feel like I do, that it's breathtaking, in its originality. Okay. Breathtaking. That's a high bar. It's yeah, a high it's, bar. It, uh, yeah. The um, first of all, to comment on the half hour stuff, like, it feels like I can watch three half hour episodes with greater ease than I can watch one hour episode. Like that's true. And it's and just as you, as, they're, as they're you so bite sized. And like, yes. it, and, what, it's over and, already. Let's have another one. And you, yes. And you know, going into it, that it's bite sized. And so you're really paying attention. The other thing I've done, which is perhaps worthwhile, given your perhaps sentiments so. on sci fi, um, is that I have uh, binged to, ke- to completely redo the entire Westworld, mm. which is some um, 30, uh, 27 episodes. That's and many I'm hours. In, yeah. And I'm, not only watching the episode, but I'm watching the after discussion, mm-hmm. which I'm so happy I did because I will never be lost in Westworld again. And because in the first string of watching it, I didn't participate in the full experience, so to speak. There were some things that I didn't understand that, of course, were explained mm-hmm. in a way that, that is extraordinarily helpful. And my appreciation of it has doubled, d- tripled. Not to mention this bizarre story that I want you to Google is Rachel... Evan, uh, wait a minute. Wait, Wood. Right. What's her name? Rachel. So we got this backwards so many times. Uh, Evan, Rachel. Episode. It's uh, Rachel Evan Wood. And her relationship with Charles, with... Uh, um, with um, no, it's Evan Rachel Wood, damn it. Evan Rachel Wood with Manson. With... Um, Manson. Ed Harris? Who? The singer. Not the Charles Manson, but... Uh, 
who's the weird her spouse is Jamie Bell uh man Manson Marilyn Manson yeah Marilyn Manson do you know about this Wood dated her English actor Jamie Marilyn Bell Manson. for a year in 2005 and 2007 her relationship with rock musician Marilyn Manson became public Wood was the inspiration for Manson's song Heart Shaped Glasses and appeared in the song's music video they became engaged in 2010 but ended their relationship seven months later uh okay yeah. physically psychologically abusive him a, to her a yes a story of such despicable magnitude that it will it, it i just my jaw dropped open i had no freaking idea what this woman went through and uh, uh okay. and that in in a in a way is, is inspiring that she survived it uh but also provides another layer of of in, intrigue and and appreciation for her acting uh, and the prelude to her abuse uh, was a very disjointed and difficult childhood with uh-huh. separated parents and, and whatnot. And to see, to, to, to appreciate Westworld with her incredible, incredible uh, mm-hmm. skill. Uh, right. as, this, as, a, as a sex slave robot. Um, it must be said. No, not as a sex slave robot. That was not her role. She was a she was a daughter of a rancher. She was a heartthrob. She wasn't. Yeah, a, but no. The, and 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 there were there's all sorts of characters in it that are in fact prostitutes, and, and okay. do just that. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Everybody has a role. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You know, and her life relived. A, a, you know, many, 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 many times as she was killed and then re, right. re rebooted, uh, so to speak, and and how. Jeffrey Wright's character, and this is Jeffrey Wright at the most extraordinary optimum of his acting career. He is unspeakably perfect in this role. And Anthony Hopkins, are you kidding yeah. me? Are you kidding me? You cannot take your eyes off Anthony Hopkins every moment he is on that screen. He is, it, it's it's just, it's mesmerizing. So it's like, after... Does he appear after the first season? Because I've sort of seen oh, yes. the end of the first season. Okay. Yes, in in ways that, of course, are twists and in plots. Right. And Ed I, Harris. I love oh. the, uh, I love the. Uh, you don't see that door, uh, meme from, from Westworld. Like, we programmed you not to see that door, so you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it says in, on Wikipedia, it says in February 2021, Wood named Manson as her alleged abuser on, on Instagram, where four other women made similar allegations against him. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department said they were investigating Manson, Manson due to allegations of domestic violence. To date, 16 people have made accusations against Ooh. Manson, and four have sued for sexual assault. So, yeah, he was quickly maligned as when I was a teenager, you know, in the 90s for being like, satan uh, adjacent uh, uh and which you know that was kind of a bullshit scary thing but uh, you know also he could be a total asshole like yeah well apparently apparently, yeah. apparently kevin spacey and you know all those people oh, lord so oh lord anyway uh, so i saw uh, in this in bef- before i left the states uh i went to the movie theater and i saw the top gun reboot oh did you I did. Yeah, I wondered and I, about it. I was I was told that it was you know kind of amazing. Like I like I heard reviews of it from people that had seen the first one and other people that hadn't seen the first one because they were they had been you know teenagers when that one came out and were like anti jingoistic uh, you know pro military bullshit, uh, which is a reasonable you know uh, case to 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 uh, to make against Top Gun. But uh, so I saw it with my father and it was exactly what you would expect it was perfectly made uh tom cruise is uh for all of his faults and like he's probably responsible for a lot of the uh like abuse and shit that goes on in the scientology church uh his fucking smile man it's like it's hard it's hard to hate him and uh and anyway it was uh they did a great job of obscuring like before it was like oh the russians and the cold war the russians are our enemies and this time it was like some uh, foreign entity is like enriching uranium and we have to go destroy their factory, like was the mission. But anyway, they did as far as reboots, like I'm super against 
SQLs like cashing in on yeah. previous stuff. This was a long time stuff. ago. Right. Uh, but years, right? They did, a, they did a darn, as, as good a job as you could have done. Like, yeah. I, I can't imagine a better version of this. So uh, anyway, it, um, it is what it is. It, um, there, were, there were fighter jets and explosions and uh, dogfights. <laughs> and, and great, great electric smiling. And uh, yeah, and I also learned before I saw it and then I observed as I was watching it that uh, Tom Cruise has one of his incisors is like perfectly centered in his mouth, like right below the, his nose and his, his, his philtrum. Like there's one incisor there, like his teeth are shifted. But you don't notice because he's so, he's so darn attractive. Uh, but uh, but if you actually look like his teeth are all weird, <laughs> but whatever. I, I am suddenly, I am suddenly going to be paying attention to Tom Cruise's teeth. Thank you. I know. You're welcome. For that insight, I I think that that's probably in there in that little snippet. Yes, is the uh, sub subtitle of this our 153rd uh, episode. But we need a good title like uh, Cruise Teeth or Top Teeth or uh, Top Gun Teeth or or a question. This is How a, is Tom Cruise smile not like that of a beaver? That's so true, man. <laughs> huh? Catchy. You can put that on a t-shirt. Tom? Hey, yes. We can make money on this. Would we have to give him some? No, we'd have to give it to the Scientology Church. Or not. I mean, uh, not. they would come and sue us, but I then we would. I got to ask a question. I got to ask you, what's on your t-shirt? <laughs> That's a great question. So this is this is one of my only um, podcast T-shirts that I that I own, and it's uh, it's the slogan that came very. So this is a podcast that's probably ten years old, like early, early, early days in podcasting, and uh, and the slogan is um, "Keep moving and get out of the way." Uh huh. It's like that, but that like that's that's uh, uh -huh. it's not keep keep moving or get out of the way. It's keep moving and get out of the way. Uh -huh. It's it's like people need to know that if they're blocking other people, like they can't stop. They need to either, not either, they need to keep moving and get out of the way. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's a well, my brother's, to, my brother's uh, mantra similar to that is, keep your back to the wall, stay low and keep moving. Very similar, very, very similar. And that's that's from his uh, his his wife, his faithful departed wife. Well, listen, man, it's uh, it's been a uh, keen uh, 90 minutes. It's yeah. good to catch up. Um, are we on uh, steady again, or is that the uh, for the plan? next three weeks? And okay. then, I, and then I travel to the states, and then in theory, I can do it from there too. Well, and uh, no, I will be in Allegheny State Park the fourth of July, uh, Wednesday the sixth. So that's a uh, that's a no go. Okay, that's a free Wednesday for me. All right, it's great. Amen, brother. I wish, I wish I had a song, but the only thing I could think of is related to tom cruise and that would be i'm leaving on a jet plane because i don't know when i'll be back again that's not right at all so i'm not gonna do that that doesn't that doesn't work okay that's episode number 153 in the can and in your ears you can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 153 with the links to like that wings place that I went to in Atlanta. You can help support the show at patreon.com slash happyhour, or if you give at the gin martinis level, you can watch a video of our call. We'll see you next week.